Have you always wanted to learn how to sew, but couldn't quite figure out how to start or, or even just how to read those pattern instructions? Well, if that's you, follow me because we're going to make a pair of pajama pants from start to finish. Today, I'm going to show you what's needed to sew up a pair of pajama pants. And in particular, we're going to be doing Butterick 5153. So let me show you that pattern here. This pattern is actually the first pattern that I learned how to sew on. I took a class and this is what they recommended and it came up so quickly and quite honestly, it was such a satisfying sew because by the end of it, I had something that I could wear and I didn't really have to worry about the fit because they're pretty loose fitting. So what we're going to do first is I'm gonna go over some details that you need to keep in mind when you're going to pick out the pattern. And then we're gonna go over the supplies that you need. We're gonna cut out the fabric and then we're gonna sew it up. This pattern is Butterick 5153. And if you see over here in this corner, it tells you the actual sizes that this pattern contains itself. Now, please keep in mind that not every single pattern is going to have this range of sizes. For example, this is McCall's 5992. And if you look at it, it only includes large and extra large. So you're going to have to pay attention to the size that's included in the patterns. If you're making Butterick 5153, then you don't really have to worry about choosing the wrong pattern size because it does contain all of them. So in order to determine the size that you want to make, what you need to do is first take your waist measurement using your tape measure, and then you wanna take your hip measurement. So go ahead and take your measurements, but please note that these patterns are made to be really roomy. So if you say, for example, your hips fall in at 46 inches when you measure them and your waist is 37 inches well don't worry too much about that there's so much extra space built in to these patterns you can easily sew up this size large and it's still going to fit nicely after you've taken your waist and hip measurements and you've gotten your size what you want to do is figure out which view you want to make so view A is the short shorts, view B is the longer shorts, and view C are the pants. I'm gonna make view C, which are the pants, and I'm gonna use this fabric here. This fabric is about 60 inches wide, so I'm gonna use pant C, 60 inches, and I'm gonna come over here to the large, and you can see I need two and a quarter yards of fabric. So that's how much you're gonna that's how much you're gonna actually purchase. If, say I were doing my size in the longer shorts, which was view B, I would come up here and look at the 60 inch wide and I would get one and three quarter yards. So that's how you read this. A couple of other things to note are, here are some suggested fabrics for you to use flannels, broadcloth, cotton knits. Really, for these pajama pants, what you wanna use is something that is not stretchy. Again, we're not using stretchy fabric. You want to use something that is like cotton, linen, something that when you tug on it, it doesn't really go anywhere. Also, there's a notion section over here and it notes that you're gonna need one inch elastic, about seven eighths yards for kids, and one and a half yards for adults. So just keep in mind, you're gonna need, your, you're gonna need some elastic as well. All right, let's get to the rest of the stuff. So for this project, what we're gonna need first is the fabric. So I'm going to use this cotton fabric here, and you're going to need scissors. Now I have two pairs of scissors. These are my scissors for fabric cutting, and these are my scissors that I use for paper exclusively. I never interchange the two. I don't cut paper with my fabric scissors. I don't suggest you either. Elastic. This is my tape measure. This is a seam gauge. Thread. 
a safety pin, the bigger the better, needles, and this is my seam ripper. Over here I have paper weights, which are just the biggest washers that I could find at my hardware store. And these are the pins that I'm going to be using. So now that we have all of our supplies together, let's go ahead and get to cutting out our pattern pieces. It's my kid, we put him down for a nap, and he's not feeling it. Um, so, when you open up this pattern, what you're gonna notice is that inside are a couple of things. First, you're gonna find the instructions to actually put this together, and then you're gonna find some tissue paper. So go ahead and cut out the size that you've already determined that you need to make for yourself. Now keep in mind that there's a bunch of shortened and lengthened lines, there's a crotch line, make sure that you are cutting out the entire pattern. So for me, I'm making the pants length, and so I'm gonna come all the way down to this bottom hem, one and a quarter inches down at the bottom. But if I were doing view A, for example, the shorter shorts, I would come over here and cut at this line. So just keep that in mind and go ahead and cut out your pieces. So you're going to need three pieces for this pattern. You're gonna need the back, which is pattern piece one, the front, which is pattern piece two, and piece three is the tie. The tie is really there for decoration in the front. It's what's gonna help you during those late nights when you're super tired and just wanna get into the bed and determine which side is front and which side is back. So for the 45 inch diagram, for the layout, this is the one that I'm going to use. It's for the large and extra large, but it's got that 45 inch diameter. So I'm cutting on a fold. I'm gonna line up all of these pieces, one on top of the other like that. So that's what I'm gonna be going for. Okay, so now that I have my pattern where I want it to be, I'm gonna go ahead and throw down a couple of washers to kind of keep this thing in place. Now, some people don't use pins. I like using pins. Now that my pattern is kind of stuck there, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the pattern to my fabric. While you're pinning it, you wanna be careful not to lift the fabric up and throw a pin in it, just like that. What you wanna do is drive the pin through at an angle and then bring it back up. So that way you're disturbing the fabric as little as possible. Okay, so now that I have this pattern piece pin, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other pattern pieces onto the fabric, pin them on, and then we'll get to cutting. Now we're going to go ahead and use our fabric scissors to cut our pattern pieces out of, on our fabric. So go ahead and grab your fabric pieces. The one thing that I wanna know is along this pattern, you're gonna see a bunch of little triangles on the edges. And there's one here and then there's two over here. What those are, those are notches and you have two different options for that. You can either cut reverse looking triangles going out. So you have triangles poking out or you can make a little slit, which is my preferred method where those triangles are. But I'll show you how to do both of those. Okay, so you can see here, when I pull this pattern piece away, that I have those triangles sticking out. Some people really like that because you can see where those triangles line up much easier. And what they're actually there for is to help you line up the different pattern pieces so you can match them up, you put pins in there. We'll go over that in a bit. The other option would be for you to just make a little slit. And so let's say that you were just cutting out the pattern along, what you would do is where that triangle is, go ahead and make a slit. You know, it doesn't matter that there's a slit in the pattern here because when you sew it up, it's still going to be within the seam allowance. The seam allowance is the distance from the edge of the fabric to where your thread line is actually going to be when you sew it. In this case, it'll be a 5 8 seam allowance, so 
If you're putting these little slits in there, you're fine, you're okay. And a quick thing to note, one of the things that I like to keep near me is a little trash can, so that way I can throw away all of the tiny little scraps immediately in there. It takes care of it. Um, I highly recommend Superhero Popcorn Tins. So grab your pieces and we're gonna to start to follow the instructions here. So the very first instruction here says to stitch the back and front together at inner leg. The inner leg is this shorter leg right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the front piece and we're gonna find our back piece and we're going to put them wrong sides together. Oh my gosh. I just told you guys to put the wrong sides of the fabric together. Don't do that. That's the wrong thing to do. What you want to do is make sure that the right sides of your fabric are facing each other. So my fabric doesn't have a right or a wrong side. It looks the same on both sides. But take a look at your fabric and determine which side you want to show to that special person in the bed next to you. And after you determine that, you want those two sides to be facing each other. So this is my front piece, and this right here is my back piece. It has the two slits here for the notches. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin it together at that inner leg. and you wanna match the notches. So you'll see here that there's a two notches. Well, there's one notch on each of the pant legs on the, right here. Match that up and put a pin right there. Pin at the very end, the bottom of your pajama pants. Make sure your fabric is lined up nicely. And put as many more pins as you feel you need to keep this fabric together and from moving, okay? So go ahead and pin both of your legs together like this, and then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine. So now with the sewing machine, there's a couple of things that I want to point out. First, you want to have your machine already threaded so you can see that I have thread that's running through here, through the needle, but also my needle is in the left hand side position. That's a center. This is going to be the left hand side position of this foot. Over here, you can see that there's different grid marks. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to line up my fabric with this very first line here, which is my 5 8 line. If I'm not mistaken, all sewing machines have these lines on it, but if not, go ahead and put a little bit of tape there to mark where your 5 8 line is from your needle position here. So go ahead and get your fabric up underneath the presser foot line it up with that very first line make sure it's nice and straight drop your presser foot and start sewing making sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end make sure you remove the pins before you get to them you really don't want to sew over those Backstitch. 
go ahead and cut that thread. Lift your presser foot, and there we go. Oh, so that's your seam. Now what I want you to do is, I want you to go ahead and sew the other leg together, and then we're going to finish our seam. So now what we're gonna do is, you see we have the seam there. We just sewed together the inner part of the leg. What we need to do is finish off this seam so that, or the edge here, so that way all of these threads don't continue to fray when we wash it. So we're just going to, I'm gonna show you how to do it on your sewing machine if you don't have a serger. But then I'm gonna go in and finish up the rest of mine with my serger. So for this, what you wanna choose is your zigzag stitch. Okay, so to finish this seam, what I want you to do is choose your zigzag stitch. Now, I have a couple of them to choose from, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose this basic one that I think most machines have. And then I'm going to widen that stitch as much as I possibly can. What we're going to do is we're gonna zigzag right over the edge of one of the sides of our fabric here. And we're gonna do the entire side that way, come back and do the other side. Don't worry about back stitching on this part. And so that's what this stitch looks like, and that's gonna help it from keeping the edges from unraveling. So go ahead and do that on all of the seams and then press your seams open. Great, so now we're at the part where we actually need to press our seams open. And so what we're going to do is just open it up with your fingers, get your iron in there, and apply some steam. Some people like to flip it over and give it a good press from this side as well. It's a good practice. And there you have it. One done, go ahead and do it to both. Now that we're here to step number two, let me go ahead and read that for you. It says stitch crotch seam, stitch again a quarter inch away in seam allowance along curve as shown, and then trim close to second stitchy. And I'll put a picture of this step in there for you so you can take a look at that. So basically, what this means is we need to put it all together, right? So with the right sides together, so go ahead and put your one piece out, right? There's my right side facing me. And then I'm gonna match it up so that this right side, see my seams are on the outside? I'm gonna match that up. Now I'm gonna match it up at the crotch curve. And I'm gonna put a pin in there. Now I like to pin down both sides of my seam allowance so that way as I'm sewing it, the flaps don't kick up and go in weird directions. And then we're gonna match up the single notches here. So put a pin there. And a pin up at the top. And then I always like to put a couple of extra pins around this curve. Any curvy area, I think, 
deserves a couple of extra pins. Okay, and we're gonna do the same on the other side. So this is the booty side. Now coming up on this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna match up my notches first. I'm gonna notch up, I'm gonna match the end here. And then put as many pins in between as you feel you need to keep all of these, to keep this fabric from shifting around on you. Okay, so now that we have this together, what we're going to do is we're going to sew along in the curve. So we're gonna sew 5 8 seam allowance starting from one end here, going all the way down and around and coming back up here. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. And then we're gonna go back in and sew in that quarter inch seam that they were talking about. So first let's sew this together. Okay, so again, you wanna line up the fabric with that 5 eighths line that we've already determined. Don't forget to backstitch. You know, sewing around curves can be really kind of tricky. So make sure that you're guiding the fabric with this hand. Okay, great. So now that we have that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to that curve right in here. You see where the seam is? So we're going to reinforce this crotch so that way it doesn't bust open on us by accident. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter inch away from this line, from this line right here back stitching at the front and back, but only around this curve. So a quarter inch away from this line is me running this line against the edge of my foot on this side. So this side right here. And my foot, my needle position still in that left hand side. So don't forget to back stitch. Great, so now we have the two lines of stitching here. Also, part of the step two instructions tells us to trim close to the second stitching. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Cut all your, cut all your, <laughs> make sure you're cutting all your loose thread. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to trim 
up to this first line so that way we can open up this seam allowance and you'll see that in a bit. Do not cut through the stitches. You wanna cut up to the stitches, but not through them, okay? Do the same thing on this side. You see? And there we go. And then we're going to trim very close to this stitch line right here. I mean, because really no one needs this much, this must, <laughs> I mean, because really nobody needs this kind of bulk in their crotch. I don't know, unless you like that, but I don't. And there you have it. This thread line right here will actually make it so that way this doesn't unravel too much. So you don't have to worry too much about that. So go ahead and finish your edges, press open your seam allowance, and meet me back here. Step three actually calls for us to pin the sides of our pant legs together from waist to the bottom and to sew it up. So when you put the right sides together, so that way your seam allowances or everything is facing you, the wrong side is facing you, you're gonna end up with something like this. So go ahead and put your pins in, matching the bottom, the notches, and the top on both sides and meet me at the sewing machine. We're sewing our 5 8 seam allowance again. And don't forget to back stitch at the front and beginning, at the front and end. Great, so now that we're here, go ahead and finish your edges, press your seam allowances open, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're on to step four of our instructions. And uh, this is where it's gonna start to get into the casing, where we're gonna get into the elastic bed and all. But step four reads, for easier insertion of elastic, based about three inches of seam allowance in place at casing area. And I'll insert a picture here so that way you can see the little picture and everything that they show. Basically what they're trying to say is that when we fold over the waistband part and go to put in our elastic, if these edges here, like this, if that's loose, sometimes when you're trying to get the elastic in, it gets caught up under there, and it could be a bit of a pain in the butt. So they're saying, go ahead and baste stitch about three inches here, so that way, when you run the elastic through, it's not getting caught up underneath that fabric when it's folded over like that. A base stitch is basically just a regular straight stitch, but it's the longest length possible. So I'll show you what that looks like on my sewing machine now. We're at the base stitching step. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and choose the needle left position, which is this one for me. And then I'm going to increase the length of my stitch as high up as it'll go. And for this machine, it's five. So for people who don't have a machine like this, what you can do is look at the dial on your machine and choose the longest stitch available. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to base stitch both of these ends so that way it doesn't get caught up when we try to run the elastic through. So make sure that the other, uh, the other side isn't underneath what you're doing. Put this under the foot. I like to keep my foot along the edge there. And just so about three inches. You do not want to back stitch at the beginning or the end. So don't back stitch. And for this side, I'm just going to line up this with the middle. So now you see, well, it can get on, it could get just a little bit, but not much, this side's much better. Do that with all of your seam allowances. As a quick little note, you can see here that my edges don't exactly match up. They're just a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna promise myself to do better next time. And I'm just going to Correct that little mistake. So now it at, so now both of the edges match up. If yours is off big time, then you're really going to have to promise yourself to really try harder and do better next time. So that way they match up a little better. But hey, it happens, so don't sweat it. Step five tells us to form a casing by turning the upper edge of the pants to the inside along the fold line and then turning it in a quarter inch of a, yeah, a quarter inch on the raw edge, pressing, stitch close to lower edge, leaving an opening, stitch again, close to the upper edge. Okay, let's like, let's break this down and let me show you a little trick. So number five might sound really confusing, but really it's not. What it's telling you is, now that you have the wrong sides, you know, showing like this, what you want to do is fold over a quarter of an inch like that, press that in place, and then we're going to fold it over again as such, about an inch and a quarter, and then we're going to sew at the bottom and we're gonna sew at the top and make sure that when you're sewing the bottom, you leave a hole so we can put the elastic through. I'm gonna show you a bit of a cheater method here. So this is what I like to do when I'm not using my, when I'm not using my really, real favorite method, but we're, we're keeping a beginner here, so let's go. With your basting stitch all still ready to go, go ahead and sew a quarter inch along this edge. Okay, and so when that's done, now you have the guide for where you're actually going to press it over and hit it with your iron. So that's the line that we're going to be hitting it at. Okay. So now that I've measured this, an inch and a quarter, there we go, we're going to go ahead and put our pins in. Now I'm going to put my pins down here at the bottom because we're going to sew this, this edge first. So go ahead and pin it all the way around. I like to match up all of my seams. I like to match up all of my seams first. And then I'll go back and put some pins in the middle. So now that we have all of this pinned, we're going to sew right along this very edge. Oh, look at this guy, he escaped, hang on. 
We're gonna sew all the way around this edge as close to the edge as possible, but we're going to keep a little space in the back. We're gonna reserve about this much space so that way we can run the elastic through without, without any issues, right? So let's get to sewing. So a quick thing to note, if you haven't already changed your stitch back, make sure that you change it back to the regular stitch length. Don't forget to leave some space at the end so that way you can put that elastic through. And then we're gonna get to sewing. We're going to back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, so there you see is where my hole is so I can insert my elastic. What we wanna do now is take this to the iron, go ahead and press your, press your waistband flat, and then we're gonna come back and sew this. So go ahead and work your iron magic and then meet me back here at the sewing machine. Okay, so here we are again. I've went ahead and I've ironed that so it's nice and flat and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna top stitch on the right side so flip your pajama pants the right way out and then we're going to put this band right back under here and we're gonna sew close to this edge here around and around and around so let's get to it. So there you see, there's a channel that our elastic's going to fit through. So go ahead and grab your elastic. We're on to the next step. All right, so we're almost at the end. What you wanna do now is take your elastic and you want to wrap it around your waist to the desired tightness that you want, right? Mine is already pre-cut, but I'll show you. That's pretty much all that I want. And make sure that you overlap it a little bit. Go ahead and cut it where you want because we're going to have to sew it back together. <laughs> so get your elastic cut and let's get to it. Okay, so here's my elastic, here's my safety pin. I wish that my safety pin were a bit bigger but hey, I'm working with what I have. I suggest you do too. So what you wanna do is go ahead and open up that safety pin and put it right through that elastic like that. Now grab your pants and find out where that hole is. And see right here, that's exactly where mine is. So I'm just gonna put this right in there and start threading my elastic through the hole using the safety pin. Now make sure when you get towards the end that you don't suck the actual end of your elastic in <laughs> to the hole because it would really stink if you had to start all over again. Okay, and so what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and connect the two of these elastic points. So take out your, take out your safety pin and try to pull out as much of this elastic as you can right now. Make sure that your elastic is straight though. You don't want to get it all tangled up. Put it underneath your presser foot. And now we're going back to that big old zigzag stitch. Remember that one? Yep. We're gonna do it again. So we're gonna go forward and backwards a couple of times.
Okay, so I just did that five times. Now stretch out that waistband to get that elastic right back in there. Find your hole, because now we need to close up the hole. So really what you want to do now is, now that the elastic's in there and we've closed it up, go and try on your pants, because once we close up the casing, that little hole that we used to put the elastic in, it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to make it fit again. So go and try them on, see if you like where your elastic is, if it's tight enough or not. Make that adjustment if you need to, and then meet me back here at the sewing machine. Great, so I went and I tried on my pajama pants. Ewok wants to say hi. All right, buddy. Okay, so I've gone and I've tried on my pajama pants, and I like the way they fit. The elastic doesn't feel too tight or loose, so I'm gonna roll with it. Okay, so at this point, what we wanna do is we wanna close up the bottom over here. So get your um, elastic part under the presser foot, stretch out that fabric, and sew this line shut. Okay, go ahead and do that now. And the next step that we have coming up in our lovely instructions here is to go ahead and finish up the hem and the tie. So we're going to go ahead now and baste around the edge of our pant legs a quarter inch so that way we have our guide so we can actually go in and press it in. And then we're gonna bring that up another inch and then we're going to hem our pants. And we're gonna do that on both legs. Follow me. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and remove this section of my sewing machine so that way I can put the legs right in there. See how to just nicely slip right in? If yours removes, I suggest you do this as well. Choose your basting stitch and let's sew that quarter inch line. Here you can see that I've already pressed under my quarter inch and then I've gone ahead and turned that over an additional inch so that way I can sew around this. So I'm going to put a couple pins in here just so that it doesn't shift around and then I'm going to sew close to this edge here. Go ahead and slide in your pajama pant. I like to start at one of the seams. Make sure that you have your regular stitch set and let's go. Trim your threads. And now the instructions actually calls for you to sew close into this edge as well. So let's just go ahead and do that. stitch trim your threads mm -hmm. 
and there's one done. So go ahead and do the other pant leg like that, and then we'll do the ties. Actually, you don't even really need to put that last row of stitching down there at the bottom. I misread the pattern, so you see? Pattern instructions can be confusing. Take, take your tie fabric, put it down, and then we're going to fold it right in half like this. And we're gonna press it. Okay. Give it a real good press. And then you wanna go ahead and open it back up. <clears throat> Now the instructions actually call for us to sew up a side, take a little loop turner, reverse it. We're not doing all of that. No one has a time for that. No one wants to shed the tears. The next step that we wanna do is we wanna fold in both the edges on this so that way they're pointing in towards the that center line that we have, right? So go in there. And give that a good press. When you have that, what I want you to do now is take the end and you want to fold it down, press it, and then fold over those edges. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that way we have a nice clean edge there and we don't have to worry about our ties and we don't have to worry about our ties unraveling and by the way if you guys hear anything funny going on my husband's cooking okay. and so the last thing that we're going to do here with the with the iron is we're going to fold it in half again. And you can see this is what our tie is gonna look like. So give that a real good press. Use all that steam. And there's our tie. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to close up this open edge. So just sew as close as you can to the edge of this, and then we're going to attach it to our pajama pants. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. If you remove that one attachment to your sewing machine, go ahead and put it back on. So that way we can just sew up the rest of this. So pull, now I have a little thread. Let me get rid of that. Okay, we're gonna sew right along that edge. Don't forget to backstitch. Trim your threads. And now we can attach this to our pajama pants. The video that I had actually filmed where I showed you how to sew this tie onto your pajama pants didn't take. So I thought I'd take this time to kind of walk you through it. So after you have your tie sewn up, what you want to do is put your pajama pants, just one layer, make sure you don't catch the back layer, just the one, put that underneath your needle, and then you want to place your tie right on top of that, like this. And I know the instructions say don't, don't catch the elastic, but I honestly don't think that it's that important right here. And then you want to sew vertically right here. I backstitched, came down, 
backstitched again, and that was it. That attaches the tie, and you're good to go. So go and put on your pajama pants and take a nap.